Welcome back, YouTubers, to another episode of Near Mint Condition Gaiden. Today, I am showing you my monthly haul for April 2017. As you can tell, I got a little carried away. Like most of us, we've been waiting on a few of these to show up. So, uh, let me first talk about some of these. Um, the first book I ended up getting was the collection of the haunt of fear this is volume four by dark horse and i'm a, a, if you've seen my video of my hardcover collections and my omnibus and absolute collections you know i'm a big ec fan and if you've seen our horror episode you know that i love it so i do think this one has collects issue number 19 which has a story called Foul Play. And Foul Play was one of the stories that they took for the seduction of the innocent books, which cost, yeah, there it is, which cost the, the book burnings, the comic book burnings, and EC to go under, and the comic code. So, I've been waiting to read this story for a long time. I know that it just shows a graphic dismembered body, is why they decided to put it in that book. Um,. So let's dive into a couple of these. That was the one that I wanted to talk about. I ended up breaking down and getting some used books. Um, the Thanos Redemption, which I've been wanting to read for a while. And both of these right here by Roger Stern, The Absolute Vision, Volume 1 and 2, because I get tired of waiting on the Epic or Omnibus, so I can't wait to dive into that again. It's been a few years since I've read those. Uh, next up, I wanted to try some of the Boom Power Rangers. I've read some of the issues, so I wanted to try the mini series, the little mini series, and then a couple of the issues that I missed. Here's my some of my in stock haul, which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. This is after the Valentino, and this kind of wraps up the that era of Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy in the '90s. It covers all the way up to. Issue 62, I believe. Yeah, this one's 51 to 62 in the annual. Ah, the one I've been really looking forward to. Mark Wade Volume 2, Flash. And the first thing I did was make sure that DC included those books written by Gerard Jones. The Green Lantern books. And they're in there. So, I know they've canceled a couple of the Green Lantern books. But I'm glad to see that they kept them in here for the storyline so now another book that i bought that i have the original trade paperback of is legacy what i didn't know is that they're splitting it up into two volumes this is volume one so i guess volume and honestly this has just legacy part one it ends with the cliffhanger so i assume that volume two will have part two and so on so one of my favorite covers of all time by Mike Zek, Captain America, Epic Collection. I believe this is from Captain America Annual Number Eight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's got the Scourge storyline, which, if you were reading Marvel at the time, there was a character that was going around killing villains, and it was kind of left for open interpretation. I don't know. But it was really fun. Yeah, that is the cover to number 8. But recolored. I love that cover. The complete phonogram. Image. Hardcover edition. It's the Gillen and McKelvey collection. I've been wanting to read it because I was a big fan of their Journey into Mystery and Young Avengers. So people have been telling me to read this book for a while. So excited to dive into that. Um, also, of course, I have to get the Brubacher hardcover of Velvet. And it's amazing. I've read this before when it was coming out on issues. And it's amazing how much Steve Epting's art has changed over the years. Now, I knew Steve Epting from his run on Avengers and then X-Factor. But you can, even though it's changed, you can kind of still see that Joe Kubert art school faces, which I think is phenomenal. I'm a big Epting fan ever since he came back and started doing uh, Captain America. I decided to pick up the first volume of All-Star Batman, the hardcover. It is over 
oversized. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's not oversized, sadly. I thought it was going to be oversized. The Clone Conspiracy, which is a freaking mess, the way that they have the story laid out. So, in here, to give you a quick uh, timeline of their suggested reading order. This is not the way that the book is printed, however. The book is printed with Amazing Spider-Man number nine, uh, 19, yeah. And then continuing to Clone Conspiracy 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all in that order. And the rest of the books are in the back of the book, which makes absolutely no sense. I think the free comic book day one was even towards the end. And the finale of the cosmic saga that we've been waiting to get in hardcover the road to war of the kings no they were coming out in different order but it fi it's finally here so i'm so happy that marvel decided to give us all these wonderful stories in heart in omnibus format and they're all here for our enjoyment uh this does include the deadly genesis uh, there you have it, the table contents. The Nova issues, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Silent War, and Son of M miniseries, and then, yeah, the Secret Invasion of Humans. All leading up to the War of the Kings. Great storyline. Now, a book I want to push is this volume one of Young Justice. This is Peter David's volume one. And it is just a really fun book of... 90s young superhero action Robin, Superboy, Impulse I just uh, I can't recommend that book enough it's a great read if you've never read it and I wanted to go ahead and finish out my new 52 trades so I picked up a few um, like Wonder Woman it's the final volume 8 I think there's one more of Detective this is volume 8 Aquaman, that's the final volume. Flash, I believe there's one more. There's a volume 9 coming out. Um, Green Lantern. And the thing that kind of stinks is I'm kind of double dipping because all of these final volumes, 8 and 9, also include like the Rebirth issue 1, which I don't need that, but eh, whatever. I'm okay with it. But yeah, I wanted to go ahead and get it. I picked up the reprint of the Brubacher Lark just to... See if I was able to tell the difference between other than the price of used to be seventy five and this one is a hundred dollars, but it collects the exact same material. Um, then Wonder Woman and the Justice League. This kind of takes place after the Batman. I'm sorry, Superman and Justice League, because you know spoilers, he's dead. So they want. I'm glad they decided to continue the story, even though we're getting into the extreme era of Booster Gold. Um, Chu. Uh, now, Chu is a book that I wait to get and read when I get the hardcovers. So, this was a really fun read. I really enjoyed it. I still feel like the ending was rushed without giving anything away. But I was satisfied with what happened. Um, X-Men Legacy Legion was another book that I've been wanting to read. I read the first couple of issues and they were interesting enough. So, I'm glad that they decided to do a um, omnibus. And... Believe it or not, it's only 75 bucks. So kudos to Marvel for charging 75 bucks for about 25 issues instead of the typical 100. And then, of course, the monster. Batman Nightfall, Volume 1. From the size of this, maybe there might be three volumes of Nightfall? I guess we'll see. Now, the one thing I, I have to give props to DC. They actually included... A lot of those backup issues that were not included in any of the previous collections. Um, I think they go back all the way to Batman 484. Yeah, there it is. Uh, 484. And then the Detective Comics 654. So from then on, that's pretty. That's a pretty good solid run. It's got a nice introduction. Chuck Dixon, Doug Monk. What I can't give them props, and it does include the Vendors and Bane, is that it's still... Does not include the Sword of Azrael miniseries 1 through 4. Come on, DC. The guy takes over the mantle and he just shows up in a random issue of Batman. You have to give us the complete story. How many times do we have to do this? Yes, I know we have a new trade paperback and I know we have a new set of trade paperbacks collecting his ongoing series, but 
the least you could have done is stick four issues into this massive hardcover with nice artwork by Kelly Jones, by the way. So, um, it's been a few years since I've read this, so I can't wait to dive back into it. It was a really fun book as it was coming out, and I can't wait to read it again. And last but not least, I know it's not comic book, but it is comic book related, is this beauty right here. Fem Loki. And, went ahead and cracked open i haven't opened it out of the case yet but i do collect the by shoujo figures from this set let's take her out all right that's it guys that was my big haul and i know most of you guys had a big April haul too. So, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our show, and watch our weekly show that we have every Thursday just about. We release a new episode. Um, thank you again for joining us. Don't forget that I'm also giving away the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, omnibus. And this one right here. Yeah. So watch episode 48 to find out how you can win it. There is one more thing I forgot to do. I gotta put this thing where she belongs. There you go. Now, welcome home, Femme Loki. Thank you guys again for watching.